Shimon Erem was a giant of his generation. He was one of the best. He was a founding father of the State of Israel. At the age of 15, he joined the Jewish brigades of the British Army and fought in World War II bravely. He took action from the age of 15 until his last breathing moment. His years were the years of the 1940s, the years in which the Jewish people went from the depths of human deprivation during the Holocaust and he saw our journey as a people emerging, creating a state, becoming a strong and proud nation with great friends and allies in this country and around the world. His life and times reflected the great drama of the Jewish people in the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st. He was a soldier for Israel. He fought in four wars. Israel's first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion, tasked him with training the officer corps of the IDF. He helped smuggle Jewish refugees to Israel and he helped provide the fledging nation of Israel with the means to defend itself in the early years. But more than anything, if I reflect on my relationship with Shimon Erem, I met him in Jerusalem only a few years ago as I was preparing for this mission to be the Consul General of Israel to the Southwest United States. And our conversation was about his great work in building bridges to the Christian community and the importance that support for Israel should not only be a Jewish value, but be an American value. And we had a discussion that day about the danger of Iran. And this was way before the term Arab Spring was, or the misterm Arab Spring was used by the world. And it led me, when I thought about what I wanted to share with you today, the importance of his action in the 1940s led naturally to his actions after 9-11 in creating the Israel Christian Nexus in the year 2002, understanding that the threat was a threat that was shared by all democracies, certainly by the United States and Israel. Now, I was in this country in the summer and fall of 2001. Our daughter was born. We had her papers ready and we were about to return to Israel after serving in Washington, D.C. But one thing we forgot was that we needed an American passport for her since she was born here. And it was right before we were about to go home. We waited for our turn at the passport office and 9-11 happened as we were in Washington. I'll never forget September 12, 2001, as we went to downtown Washington with tanks, APVs, um, soldiers in the streets, no one knew if that passport office would be open beyond the morning after 9-11. We got the passport, we left for Israel, and we landed right in the middle of the Intifada, the suicide bombings, in uh, late 2001. And as we were sitting in, in the hotel waiting for our apartment to be ready in Jerusalem, all we saw in that hotel were Christian friends of Israel. And I think our experience was very similar to Shimon's experience, that the threat is a shared threat, and the commitment must be a shared commitment. And he dedicated his life to solidifying these relationships, to making sure that America remains Israel's greatest friend and ally, and that Israel, which is, Israel's, which is America's only democratic ally in the Middle East, remains strong and secure. That is his legacy. And by being here today, together with his beloved life partner, Danielle, and his friends, supporters, and fellow travel men and women, let us strengthen our connection to one another in our connection to this proud legacy, let us commit ourselves to continuing Mr. Aram's life mission and help fulfill his vision of America and Israel 
two nations, indivisible, under God.